Okay, well, today I'm going to be looking at an insect under the microscope. Here, that's the compound eye of the insect uh, in question. And specifically, I'd like to figure out what it is, so which type of insect it is. And uh, later on, I'll also show you how to make a permanently mounted slide of the insect's wings. Here, you see that actually it has two pairs of wings and that the two wings are quite different from each other. Well, everything will be explained right now. Well, hi, Micro Punters here, and today I'll be putting an insect under the microscope, well, actually two of them, because I want to explore the differences between bugs and beetles. And look at this, what I have here. This is a painted stone. This is supposed to be a ladybug, but it's actually a beetle. Um, and uh, so you see that the naming of the different insects, uh, well, does not really reflect really what they are. So and with, my, with the help of my stereo microscope, we can actually uh, find out a little bit more about their true nature. Ah, uh, yeah, very clear. This is a bug and not a beetle. The reason is the mouth parts. Now here, these are the legs, of course, but uh, the mouth parts in a bug, well, uh, there are no mandibles, so it does not have a jaw. But right now I'm zooming into uh, the head and we see a trunk, this long uh, trunk that extends uh, from the left to the right. That is something which is very typical for, for bugs. And uh, beetles, what they have is they have jaws, uh, mandibles, so to say, that uh, um, are able to, to carry the food. And that's the compound eye. Um, that's something that um, all pretty much all insects have. Bugs and beetles are similar in that respect. Um, and I'm focusing back and forth uh, to a little bit get the three-dimensional nature of the eye. Yeah, I turned it around now. And, and here, this is the thing that I want to explore a little bit longer. Look at the back part um, here, the back part um, of the wing. And this part there, you can see, is a little bit transparent. It's very membranous. And it's very typical of bugs. A beetle, like this ladybug here, has a... Uh, uh, the first uh, wing, the front wing, um, is uh, not membranous um, at uh, the back, uh, but it is actually ha it's hard all the way through. So this la ladybug here, I found uh, also running around on my windowsill, um, and uh, it does not have a trunk. Okay, so it has mandibles. Therefore, it is a beetle. And here now it's trying to clean off uh, some of the dust. I want to talk a little bit about the differences uh, between bugs and beetles. Well, often in everyday language, we use these two words interchangeably, but there are especially two different items or two different anatomical differences rather um, that I'd like to talk about. And look, I'm gonna be using this uh, one, this uh, painted stone here to um, explain some, at least one of these differences here. This uh, ladybug here um, is uh, an example of a beetle. And the reason is the following. We have to look at the wing structure here. Um, what you see is, is that uh, the uh, so called the four wings or the first pair of wings um, is hardened all the way through so you see it's reddened with the black dots okay um, and that's basically the whole um, yeah the whole wing here um, is uh, completely hard the black part here that you see that is not part of the wing that's uh, between the wings okay so we're gonna ignore that um, and uh, you, uh, if it's hardened all the way through then you know that uh, this must be a beetle okay um, it, the correct name would be coleroptera um, and uh, for bugs uh, bugs uh, have a different uh, front uh, wing um, and because the bugs they have the wing here the back part of the wing here is very thin and it's not hard and it's almost like a membrane and only the front part um, is hard um, you refer to as uh, this as heteroptera hetero being uh, greek uh, meaning different and ptera means uh, wings uh, because uh, the wings have a front and a back part the front wing, at least, the first pair of wings, has a front and a back part which have, uh, have a different consistency. Yeah, uh, it was a little bit difficult to have a closer look um, at the bug. Um, so what I've done is, is I used some of these uh, entomological needles, entomological, entomological, wow, difficult to pronounce. Um, they basically are very sharp um, and very thin and I can use them, um, yeah, to, yeah, how do you say this? You know, to, to put them through the insect <laughs> and then I put them on my carrot. You already know the carrot from a previous video, right? Well, this actually makes it much easier to manipulate uh, the bug here. And here we see again the back part of the wing and uh, we can see that it is very membranous and thin and transparent, a very typical sign that we're talking um, about so-called heteroptera, which are 
those insects uh, that uh, have a front wing which is hard on the front and soft um, on the back. I tried to separate this now using my tweezers which was not so easy because it always snapped back yeah you see uh, but when you remove the top uh, wing a little bit you can see that there is a, the, the, the second pair of wings um, beneath it is uh, totally membranous it's very soft and very transparent okay here now I'm trying to uh, it doesn't want to hold yeah um, but you can see down here the second pair of wings and here both pairs of course are used for flying uh, and that's the second pair of wings which I'm trying to pull out now and then my intention is, is to put both of them um, under the microscope because they kind of look very nice okay yep. so that's uh, very difficult under the microscope to especially when you have a shaky hand but now we are hopefully not successful look it always snaps back shows how strong the muscles are of this bug here okay because when I move it uh, forward of course I'm stretching the muscles uh, and here we have the second uh, pair of wings which I'm now pulling out yeah? and you see it's very very thin and membranous um, and quite soft yeah? so that is uh, something that also the ladybugs which are as we now know beetles uh, they also use the second pair of wings uh, for flying um, and uh, the fr first pair of wings the front wing that is the typical characteristic here so you see that uh, the front part here is very hard um, and uh, also the yeah, the second pair of wing is uh, very soft and transparent. So what I'm doing now is uh, I'm trying to cut it off uh, because I want to put it under my compound microscope. This also takes a little bit of patience. Um, and yep, um, off it is. And now also the second pair of wings I want to cut off. Okay, um, and also this one here is takes a little bit of patience and here it is, here we go. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna uh, mount them um, on a microscope slide. Uh, as a matter of fact, and I'm going to use a mounting medium called Uporol, um, which is uh, very commonly used uh, when mounting insect parts. Now this one over here already expired back in 2013, uh, several years ago, um, but it still works. Uh, so uh, luckily it doesn't uh, turn bad or anything. Um, so I've used this Uporol mounting medium, um, a small drop uh, goes on the slide, another small drop here, then I'm placing the specimen in it. There's one thing that I just want to warn you a little bit here. Um, what I've done is, is I've directly placed it under my microscope for observation. You should not do that. You should actually wait around two months uh, for the medium to dry. The reason is otherwise there's the real danger that you're otherwise going to get some mounting medium on the microscope objective. This happened to me and then you have a very difficult cleaning job to do. So be patient uh, when you do something like this. Allow the slide to dry for two months so that there is no liquid mounting medium spilling out uh, like you see here because it could get on your objective and then yeah the objective has to be properly cleaned. Yeah, so um, the slow drying time also makes it uh, easier for the medium to be soaked into the specimen and this way um, it's properly preserved. So what I'm doing here right now, you don't wanna do, okay? Wait two months first um, and this is how it looks like. This is the hard part of the first pair of wings. The nice little dots here. Um, Let's zoom in a little bit because what you can see is also the blood vessels. That's kind of nice. And here we're now moving over and this is now the transparent part. See the dark brown spots there? Okay, so it's also pigmented. Unfortunately, a little bit of dust also on my, um, yeah, in my optics. And here, we, a little bit larger, we can look at the blood vessels. I think they must be blood vessels. These look like the river-like structures that you have here um, and uh, they branch out and I think this is the place uh, where you know, the blood is transported. Here again, a closer look. And the reason why this is important is evidently is because the wing itself is a living structure, of course, and also needs nutrients and there are cells in there, of course. Uh, yeah, it's alive. Yeah. So, and yet uh, um, another one here. Now we're really deep in here. And now you can see the dark spots and the surrounding blood vessels. I think these must be blood vessels. Of course, I've not seen the blood flow yet. Well, that's it again, people. Um, I hope you liked it. Uh, please uh, do click the subscribe button if you did like it. There's also, also the bell notification, which uh, basically informs you every time when you've uploaded a new video so that you don't miss any exciting new videos. And yeah, check out also some of my other videos in this channel. Um, and also I do have a second channel as well where I'm talking a little bit more about the theory of microscopes. So I'll be doing product reviews and I'll be talking about uh, microscope optics and also other related issues. I wish you all the best. Happy micro as always and see you around next time. Bye-bye.